Well, good morning. I'm glad you're here on this wonderful, if you're watching this on the 20th, uh, the 27th of January in 2021, and you're in Shasta County, it perhaps is a white morning for you as you wake up, and we're looking at some snow, and it is a distance learning day, so we weren't coming into the classroom, you weren't anyways, um, but uh, if you have power and you're able to, there's a couple of things I want you to do today, and uh, we're going to look at just question number one here, and we're also going to look at the uh, we're also going to look at the uh, math notes in this section, and then I have a delta math assignment that I'm going to have you do. So let's take a look at this. It says read the math notes about similar similar polygons in this lesson, and then we'll come back to this problem. So let's go down there and look at. So two polygons are similar with a sequence of rigid transformations followed possibly by a dilation where you enlarge your, the shape or you reduce it in size. Map one polygon onto another. So that's a definition there. It has to be true that there has to be a ser series of these rigid transformations that will map one to the other and, and possibly scale it. So two similar polygons have parts that correspond or match up with each other. For example, if, so this is a conditional statement, we're saying if these two polygons that we see here are similar, we're not, we're, we are not really at this point able to prove they are, but we're just told if they are, then the following things would be true. The first thing of which being is that vertex A and vertex B would match up. Um, they would correspond to each other. So you can see that the A and the uh, D are in the same location there. They correspond. Also, it's the case that B corresponds with E. So this vertex B goes with vertex E. And the last thing there is that vertex C goes with vertex F. So C goes with F. And the other thing that has to be true is... Um, not only do those vertices correspond with each other, but the sides correspond as well. Um, so, and you can see the sides that would go together. Um, we would have like, you know, the one, the side, for example, that's in between A and B and D and E, those sides correspond. They are not necessarily the same size, but they correspond with each other. Um, so below that, it says corresponding angles of two similar polygons have the same measure. That's a big idea. In fact, I want to make sure that we have this down. Corresponding angles, similar polygons, same measurement. So I know based on this, this fact that angle A and D are congruent. They have the same number of degrees. Angle B and E both contain the same number of degrees. That's what measurement is for an angle. How many degrees does it have? But corresponding sides might be different in length. Okay, they might be different in length. So now we're going to defel, define what the scale factor is. So right, reading right here, it says the scale factor is the ratio that indicates how the side lengths of two similar polygons are related. The scale factor can be found by writing a ratio between the lengths of any pair of corresponding sides as the length of the new side divided by the length of the original. So if we take a look at this, this diagram here that they have, they clearly have told, told us which is the original triangle and which one's the new. So we're taking this smaller one and we're scaling it up, right? So we're going from the original to the new. But the scale factor can be found by taking the length of a new side one of the new ones and divided by the original side where we started. And this is fun on a snowy morning. It looks like the scale factor is S and O, right? Scale factor is the new divided by the original. So snow, except there's no double, there's no W in there, but there's snow. So if I want to find the scale factor, it says, okay, take the length of a new side, a new side, and divide it by the original. So you can see here, I take the new divided by the original and I get five fourths. And the same thing's true for this larger side. If I take this new and divide it by the original, the new divided by the original, it gives me the five fourths. 
So the scale factor is five fourths, and it's the same value regardless of which sides I pick, right? So that's gonna be a constant. So what's cool about the scale factor, if the polygons truly are similar, once I know the scale factor, I can use that to figure out some other things. And then the last thing here, it says, um, this is this is a typo, by the way, the scale factor is five fourths. Um, finally, it says, a scale factor that's greater than one enlarges a shape. So you can see our scale factor here was five fourths. The original shape was smaller, the new one got bigger, so it definitely enlarged it. A scale factor between zero and one reduces a shape, makes it smaller. And then finally, a scale factor between two shapes, if it's equal to one, then the two similar shapes are also congruent to each other. So we now have this definition of congruent polygons, right? Or congruent triangles or any, any shape, right? Congruent, R-U-E-N-T, is, is similar with scale factor Boy, this pin's breaking up today. Of one, right? So if the scale factor is one, right? When I did this, if I got a scale factor of one, I would know that these are not only similar to each other, but they are congruent to each other. So we're just gonna finish this uh, problem then. So it says, read the math notes about similar polygons. By the way, when you do find the scale factor, remember we are going from it's this it's let me write this down snow the scale factor is the new dimension divided by the original so you can see right here they're telling me the direction that this scaling is going so i would say that this is the new and this is the original All right so we're going we're going from the original scaling down in this case to get the new so and the scale factor should be written as a reduced fraction. So if you're doing problems in Delta today and you're asked to find the scale factor, make sure you reduce those fractions. So the polygons below are similar. The polygon on the left was reduced to create the polygon on the right. What is the scale factor? And then find the lengths of the missing side. So first of all, first question is what's the scale factor? Well, I need to figure out how these are orientated with each other. And if I look closely, I can see that a rotation happened. Not only was it scaled down, but it was also rotated. Um, and to me, it looks like the side, the, the it looks like the largest side here is this one that's 35, the one that's 35. And that looks like it goes with this side that's 14. So if I rotated this around, I could get it back in that alignment. So we're gonna, we're, those are, I can see that now. It would match those parts up. Um, so the side that is 10 right here is going with this 25. This side that's labeled 25 over here is labeled Y on the smaller one. Um, this side that is labeled Z on the large one is labeled, um, it's the one labeled 8 on the small one. And I'll leave the one that's X just, I'll leave it just uncolor it just it'll just be the black line so i totally know what my scale factor is no i don't but i'm going to figure out my scale factor and to figure out the scale factor i'm going to take one of the new dimensions that i know which is actually this one that's 10 this new dimension and divide it by the original so the scale factor is the new 10 divided by the original 25 and both of those are divisible by 5 and if I, so if I reduce it, um, 10 divided by five is two and 25 divided by five is five. So I got, I have two fifths. That's so interesting that that, whoops, sorry about that. That's two fifths, two fifths is the scale factor. So again, now to figure out the missing sides, all I do is I take, um, I take an original, multiply it by the scale factor, and I get the new. 
right? So I just take these things, multiply by the scale factor of two fifths, and I'll get the new. So if I wanted to figure out, for example, how big Y is, I can see Y is one of the sides that's the, the one that I labeled in green. So I just take the original dimension, right, where I'm at, 25. I multiply it by the scale factor. I'm going to scale that, that side. In this case, I'm going to scale it down because the scale factor is less than 1. So 25 times 2 fifths, well, 25 divided by 5 is, 10, is 5, and 5 times 2 is 10. So this Y has to be 10 units long. And it makes sense now that I look at it because this was 25 and this was 10. This is 25. It made this one 10. Beautiful. Let's do, let's figure out what X is. So the scale factor or the original is 17.5. And I'm going to multiply that by two fifths to get the longer one. Well, if I double 17, that's 35. Four, and then if I double a half, that's another one. So this is 35. So this ends up being 35, um, but I have to divide by five, right? So two times, yes, times one fifth, I could say. So 17.5 times two fifth, I believe is the number seven. So X, whoa, get back up here. So X is the number seven. So we figured out what X is and we figured out what Y is. X was 10, Y is 7. The last one goes the other direction. I'm trying to find Z. So I'm just going to say, hey, I want to find Z. And I know my scale factor is 2 fifths. And when I solve for Z, I'm going to get an answer of 8. So, oh no, I'm not going to get an answer of 8. When I, Z times 2 fifths should equal 8. So I need to solve that for Z. And to me, the best way to solve for Z here would be to take and multiply both sides by 5 halves. So if I multiply this side by 5 halves, it's going to give me just plain old Z, correct? And then I multiply the other side times 5 halves, and it's going to give me um, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 times 5 is 20. So I can see that Z, Z is the number 20. All right, that's, that's going to be it. There is a small delta math assignment associated with these notes, the math notes, and then your notes on problem one here. So I hope you have a good morning, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.